You just sat down and just asked that you want to put your hand up in the air and you're sitting next to an empty seat. Oh, she's home recording us. I don't know what you're talking about. We're not that interesting, guys. Sure you are. He recorded everything. I think Sarah Tomo is going to have a pet and she is with the eye. That's not a shame! She! It's a trap! I'm pretty sure that was a doshi over there, right? I don't know. <laughs> Could have been referring to the character. Three. There's three characters. Three characters. Three There's still three seats in the third row. Two. There's somebody tied on that one. Oh. T minus five minutes. I have one more seat. Do you need water? Yeah. Thank you. If there are any more seats available, please raise your hand. There's one right here. If any of the rest of you are next to an seat, are you, are you raising your hand? We have one more in the back there. There, there, there. Do you need one? Uh, we have one more seat in the back if you don't mind the company of One more seat in the back. Everybody knows Tobos will fight on Tuesdays. <laughs> My God. 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 My in the event of a fire, then we would set even crush the wall. I don't know. Okay. So we still have a few minutes until show time. So how many people do we have in here playing Monster Hunter? Not as many as I expected. Do people need to do better? We actually already ran into a couple of people who are G-ranked in this game. And it's just like, how? <laughs> to be fair, I, a couple of friends of mine rushed me to G-rank in like a week. So... If you've got to go to the group, it's not that good at all. That's fair. That's also, if you're able to play online, I don't have a 3DS version. Hey, I, to be fair, I have a 3DS version as well. I just also bought a Wii U almost exclusively for Monster Hunter. I am a horribly financially responsible person because of it, but that's neither here nor there. Alright, and... I'm sorry, guys. That was just my mom calling. <laughs> <laughs> we have picture. All right. Slightly misaligned picture. No, mom. No one's touching my skirt. <laughs> no. We don't have anything to make a report going really on there. Nothing but gigantic screenshots that everyone will be able to see just fine. Yeah. All right. So I'd say we wait, but. Everybody who's going to get in this panel is in this panel anyway, so let's see. minus zero minutes to show time. Let's begin. So, quick introduction. My name is Nathan Malin. I, um, I used to run the BCC Anime Club, if anybody's from the area. Um, I'm currently on the executive board for the Bridgewater Community, uh, yeah, Bridgewater State College um, Anime Club. Um, where I actually run the panels and we run the meetings. Huh, how about that? Um, I've been out, you know, to, to do this with a standard introduction, I've been coming to Anime Boston for something like seven years now. I think this is my sixth Anime Boston. Um, and who are you? Right. <laughs> I'm, why are you up here? I'm Will Kuzlika. I honestly don't know why I'm up here anymore. Why would I, why would I want to be up here in your presence? 
And honestly, I don't have nearly the credentials he does. I was vice president for the BCC Anime Club under his command for a brief period of time. That's not the point. But when we first decided, yeah, we're going to do panels, what the hell are we going to do? That's when an idea came into my head for this panel called Crazy's Mega Moments. See, I had watched a bunch of Mystery Science Theater 3000 that night, and I'm like, man, wouldn't it be great if we had this but for anime? And thus was. Evidently, our most popular panel, Horn. We ran that for the first time at like Boston several years ago. Um, 2010. 2010. In that room over there. And for some reason, you people still keep coming to it, and I can't figure out why. You don't understand. We filled that room. We did not see that coming. 800 people. To this day, I'm still amazed we fill rooms. But one of the things that we, we've always been fans of, you know, we're, we're both fans of a lot of series. You know, I'm a huge fan of Watch Money Dio, She's Sweet Home, you know. But one thing that we always like are shows that really get us, you know, for lack of a better word, charged. Shows that rile the blood up. Shows that get your blood boiling. Shows that make you feel like a man! I'm just going to say right now, that's the last time I'm going to move in. I apologize, I apologize. we're going to try and keep this going. So, we came up with this idea, and for lack of a better word, we call it Manime. So, I think, obviously, we should start off by defining our terms. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to admit, some of these can be a touch debatable at times, but there are some very specific examples we'll get into later on. Exactly. We're, we're not saying that shows with, for example, shows with Moe elements cannot be anime. <coughs> um, but the, what we're trying to say is these are very loose guidelines. It's not so much the obvious bits of the show so much as it is the spirit of it. The core of it, be it through the animation or the action or the story. Right, when you say moe, you don't necessarily mean like, oh, that girl's kind of cute, she's like, kind of moe. Like, we're, not, we're also not saying that chaos is moe. No. I guess I guess the best way is, is to refer to it is, I mean moe the genre. You know, where it's, you know, like you said, chaos. Um, chaos is the most chaos, yeah. <laughs> Working. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, let me start as good. I see you making that face back there. Sure. We're not saying whether or not these shows are any good. We're saying they don't apply here. But for all, for, for all genres, there are really some tropes that really define how they work. And really, the best way to define anime is through examples of the tropes. Um, the first one is... The soul of a man that keeps you fighting through impossible odds! So you tend to see this pretty much all the time in any show like this, is this idea that it's not necessarily your strength, it's not even necessarily your ability, it says you never give up. You know, get knocked down six times, get up seven. Um, Sun Tzu said that. <laughs> I think he knows a little more about that. Yeah, we've every animal, and that's why we have animals. They're called a zoo. I'm all answered so far. I've seen that way too many times. But really, some shows put this more to the forefront than others. I mean, this show obviously ran it on. Literally, the giant robots ran on fighting spirit. That's a little more to the forefront than a show that we'll probably talk about later, you know, like Hanjime no Ippo. It's not necessarily that they're, you know, it's, it's not the fighting spirit that powers something awesome. It's not that they're like, 
It's not that they're magically empowered by this special skill that they have. They're, they're decent fighters, but they have the willpower to back it up. Even when the odds are against them, they don't back down. And speaking of that, we're <laughs> really that. So unfortunately, we couldn't get a screenshot for this, so we picked the next best thing, Underdog himself. See, this is actually very vital for the genre, because this is, you know, if, if we call it a genre, because really, this, this entire genre is all about dramatic tension. And where's the, there's not really dramatic tension in having somebody who's going to win every fight. Though, you know they're going to win every fight, but they have to be portrayed as the scrappy rebel regardless. Exactly. In the meta, you know that, you know, Simone's going to beat the guy. You know that Ebo's going to beat this guy. You know, you know, etc., etc. Though there are also some, uh, what was the word? Trope breakers? Exceptions. That's the word I'm 